Welcome to LC Screen Talk. My name is Larry, and this is my review of 21 Bridges. <laughs> Bridges follows a New York detective following a shootout that left several police officers dead. When the two perps make their getaway, they decide to shut the entire island of Manhattan down as we go on a manhunt to get these cop killers. So 21 Bridges had a, a fun enough concept. The trailers, mmm, and then those posters, whoo, I mean, they wanted to promote this as like a Avenger movie, if you will, so I have to rep the Black Panther for this. <laughs> but I like Chadwick Boseman a lot, and he generally is in really good films. Granted, a lot of his filmography is, you know, historic biopics. But I was willing to give it a chance with Boseman in the leading role. Unfortunately, yeah, this was just kind of a lame chase. So, let's go ahead and talk about the positives first. Well, I do think Chadwick Boseman actually is very good in the movie. He always brings it. Every time I've ever seen him on screen, he's bringing it. And he brings it here. He has a nice intensity to him, but with just a touch of underlying compassion that really helps define and develop his character as they move through and it's a really subtle development and that's good because this takes place over the course of like two days develop all that much but he does great work at selling this character i also think stefan james was really good in the film he was really the other standout cast member and he certainly has one of the more complex characters to play here and i thought he played it really well and i just enjoyed his presence on the screen honestly when it comes to Stefan James, I've enjoyed his presence on screen in the very limited roles I've gotten to see him in. So I hope that we continue to get more of James moving forward. The only other downright positive in the acting cast is J.K. Simmons. Small role, but I mean, he, he delivers what you'd hope for from Simmons. And I want to give a shout out to Brian Kirk, who is the director of this film, because I actually think it is a sleek and good looking movie. The cinematography is fine, but the direction itself really enhances the overall viewing experience. A very polished film that moves along at a nice pace. The framing of his shots is also really interesting and adds some nice mix ups and diversity into a pretty standard film. But other than that, I just didn't find much to like about the movie. So let's go ahead and jump into those negatives. Well, the story itself is the biggest of the negatives. From the opening, very misguided message that we start with, and then the fact that we develop that message but really go nowhere with it i mean it's really poorly handled and whew, yeah just just kind of yikes all over it <laughs> but we have twists in this movie we have reveals in this movie all of which you see a mile away i mean this is predictable from the moment we get moving in this movie you instantly piece together like wait a minute why is this happening right now I don't get it. And they don't do a good job of masking or really moving the pieces so that you have to figure it out. They pretty much just lay it down for you and say, this is what's coming up, y'all. Get ready. And the dialogue itself is not very good. Several times throughout this film, it has that like very stereotypical cop talk as they speak to one another or, you know, these dialogue heavy scenes between perp and cop and it's just all, it's like, ugh, okay. We've heard it all before. This is a recycled cop thriller script from all the other cop thrillers. And then I said I'd come back to some of these other actors. Well, we're going to start with Taylor Kitsch, who I usually really enjoy. I think mostly he was wasted. I don't think he was necessarily bad in the role, but wow, his character is terrible. Like, it just is an underwritten mess of a character in this film. And I can't really blame him much for it, but whew, it, yeah, not good. And then we get to Sienna Miller, who actively got on my nerves. <laughs> I found not only her character, but her performance to be quite grating. The accent she's putting on, just everything about her presence and her character on screen 
was grating to me and I wasn't here for it. <laughs> it was not good. We also don't deal with any sort of repercussions for any decisions that are made. As I said before, we don't go in deep or really delve into any of the issues or any of the plot lines that are brought up throughout the film. And it just leaves for really generic, but also kind of just dumb, <laughs> cop thriller. It takes itself way too seriously for the amount of stupid that comes through in the script. Ugh, yeah, yikes. So overall, 21 Bridges is meh at best. The police thriller thrown into the rinse cycle and spit out onto your movie screen. Chadwick Boseman does his work in this movie, but it's not near enough to save all that's going on around him. So if you're really, really, really into police thrillers, give this a rental. I think you might have some fun with it. It's not like a terrible movie by any means. So there will be something there for you to enjoy. Otherwise, catch it for free when it gets to TV. You don't need to pay any money for this, including Redbox. You've seen it all before and you've seen it done a whole lot better than this. I don't think you'll hate yourself if you get to see it for free. It's not bad like that, but it just it doesn't warrant you shelling out your cash. So oh, that is my review of 21 Bridges. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead, click like down below and subscribe to the channel so you are always up to date on my latest videos. Also, join in on the discussion. Are you excited to see 21 Bridges? And what is your favorite police thriller? Let me know either in the comment section down below or you can hit me up on Twitter. I love you all so much for your continued support. Mwah! Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!